We just published a spicy video. Um, yep, we should. Mm, yep, absolutely. We don't make the numbers. We just try to make sense of them. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And sometimes to make sense of numbers, it's bad, bad. And in light bad of time. those numbers we just talked about, Blizzard are giving Shadowlands away for free, including a free <laughs> boost. So, gee, I wonder if that <laughs> lends any credibility. Oh, know, dear. Maybe yeah. it's something to do with the fact that, you know, they were they started that the, the same time they're you know, biggest competitor released a new patch that was full of stuff. And also Guild Wars 2 was like, by the way, we're on Steam now. And yeah, just another, hello, checked, we exist. Yeah, I haven't checked the numbers and I don't know if anyone cares, but I'm, I saw a lot of Twitch viewership on that game, so... Right, what if actually, I tell yeah. you? Yep, we can just do That's, that right uh, now. We, yes, Steam charts. Dead game? Dead game. Guild Wars 2 is dead, everyone. All right, All so... Right. And that's so. just Steam, so obviously, like, there'll be obviously yeah. players playing it not on Steam. But You've got to remember that this game's entrenched long-term player base yeah. are 100, well, no longer 100%, but they were all, you know, with the Arena Net launcher. Still, yeah. hey, it's, uh, well, actually, currently it is in its all-time peak, basically. Well, I mean, it's kind it's of hard. Like yeah. They're in about, yeah. right? It's, I mean, only two days. Yeah, but that's, uh, you know what's fairly interesting? This is, so this is Guild Wars 2. I wonder. That's all DLC. That yeah, that I assume count. those don't have anything. No, because it's yeah, all the yeah, base okay. game. So that's Guild Wars 2. Actually, I wonder what its Steam store reviews are like. That would be fairly interesting. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. 85%, very positive. Like, I imagine most of those are going to be players who are like, hey, I've played Guild Wars 2 for years and it's really good. As opposed to, oh, wow, this new game, I'm going to pick it up and see what it's like. But we'll kind of see. Ah, oh, interesting. You can oh, you can play with Arena and that kind of good on Steam. Yep. That's that's really good. That's like kind of rare to do that properly. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, it almost certainly is. So uh that's all fun. Okay. Stuff's mm. good with Guild Wars 2. In fairness, season four I think has been pretty well received as well. Um you know I've sure has yeah. Yeah, I mean taking a look at some Via a new, uh, a new site, not Best Keystones, because it's basically stopped giving data as of the end of Season 3. Um, but this new site, I've actually completely forgotten its name. It does have... Keyscore.me. Keyscore.me. Yeah, it does have run numbers. Now, what's interesting is its numbers are way higher than Better Keystone. Best Keystone. Basically. Best Keystone. Uh, yeah. I have to assume it's the sort of thing there where uh, different numbers, because of different methodology, what I will have to do is plot some of those yeah, and see if the trends numbers. line up because if it's just you know same trend different numbers because of a different methodology but the trends hold then that maybe could be used as uh, as a data source to kind of could also be regional that's one thing they could be yeah. they could be collecting regions maybe best case don't only did and any you kind of hard to kind of hard to tell because they're all split up separately and i'm not sure what api access in china is like obviously reader.io can get chinese stuff yeah so i'm not sure if there's like a way to specifically do that that the other ones were kind of ignoring. Then it's even hard to know if the API is restored, like returning the correct things quickly. Because I know that's what a lot of people are having trouble with. Of like, Blizzard keep intentionally obfuscating parts of the API to show less and less data, and they rate limit people so they can't just like you can't just open a site and go, yeah, I'll just I'll just scrape everything on here, and provide the best kind of access to data. It's like no, they do kind of. <laughs> They do have servers to worry about, basically, yeah. more or less. Blizzard are giving Shadowlands away for free, including a boost. Now, if you're watching this, very high chance you cannot redeem. No, that's that's a thing that I think is really interesting. Like, I guess there's like, yeah, anyone who's super lapsed, come back and play Shadowlands. You'll hear the, because I saw someone in chat mention earlier that it's likely like a ploy to get people back into the realm for like Raft Classic and stuff. So it's like, hey, here's the, here's the free high value ticket item. That you can just redeem it, but then that has people, even if they don't play much of Shadowlands, they now have the Battle.net launcher installed, even though they might have uninstalled that a while ago. That kind of like, oh, you're now on our platform and you yeah, feel yeah. like you have more value attached to that account, even though you haven't played since, maybe you haven't played since Wrath. And even then, it's just a kind of, hey, here's a refresher, here's a, here's the free thing. The same way, you know, that's what a lot of what, like, the Amazon Prime giving out World of Warcraft stuff's about as well. That's like, that's... Maybe people pick up Prime, but it has to be a two-way relationship. And I imagine some of that is, you know, now you have World of Warcraft in the Twitch drop-down, like, loot menu. And you go, oh, yeah, World of Warcraft, how's that doing? Oh, Wrath Classic's out soon. Oh, boy. 
let's go play that. I remember that was really good when I was a lad, etc., etc., etc. So it's like hard to know if this is like a thing to get people back into season four. I think it is. Because if it is, then it's one of those things where they clearly didn't have enough prepared. Because obviously you go, well, season four is like the most all friendly and friendliest and easiest to get into part of Shadowlands so far. But that's for a player who's playing in Shadowlands. That's not for a player who's coming to Shadowlands fresh yeah. because they still have like dozens of hoops to jump through that they really will find a struggle to understand. And then they'll go to the Blizzard help site and then the Blizzard help site will say, just f go check, go ahead. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, overall, I do think it's primarily to get people back because of season four, given what they're doing here. Um, I, I, because there's a free 50 boost. I would highly doubt, given the just given the amount of time before Dragonflight, I think this is a ploy to get people back for Dragonflight as opposed to season four. Just, oh, okay, just, sure, just, just with just with lead time. But season four, I, maybe that it's supposed to be that like season four is likely the healthiest place that Shadowlands could be in. Hmm. Perhaps people want to feel like they can enjoy the new expansion and sort of want to get a character set up and a character ready. Hmm. Because, yes, uh, the, the alt experience is, I would say, essentially completely insane. And I don't... Oh, fresh character experience, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the fresh character experience is completely insane. Uh, it's going to be very easy to fall into a whole bunch of... Uh, I suppose sometimes people could call them a noob trap. I don't think that's really fair in this case. But, I know, I suppose a noob trap is basically fair. Because you get... I mean, there are so many things that you can do so much faster if you just know. You know about the skip. You know about the vendor. You know the way to do the thing. Yeah, and that that knowing is not something you can do, basically, unless yeah. you consult a very, very specific guide. Yep. I don't know how many people will be making those. I don't even think I saw one on Wohead, which is a surprise, I would imagine. Then maybe, maybe I just missed it because I've not been paying too much attention. But it's definitely, like, if you don't have, like, your friend with you, then, or, like, you know, someone who's actively playing, they kind of go, oh, hey, listen, this game, just don't play 90% of it. There's all you need to do to play current content. If you don't have someone guiding you, you would have no idea where to start. Obviously, the game would railroad you to the things, but then it would be like, well, here's, you know, you drop into the mall, and you go, well, here's the content. You're like, that's all 9.0 content. That's completely irrelevant. You're wasting your time. Then you're like, okay, well, whatever. And then you go to Korthia, and you're like, this looks like content, and everyone just goes, no, don't do anything here, please leave immediately. And then you're just like, what? 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 Basically, the end of expansion experience for a fresh player is a complete not a nightmare. And it yeah. is kind of by design. And I will, Jesus Christ, it's a pretty bad time to bring in players if you want them to have the optimal experience now. Basically is what I'm kind of saying. I think that's why I, yeah. that's why I imagine, I imagine they know that and they're going, just get people on the BNET launcher and then they'll buy Dragonflight and have a good time. Hopefully. And play Wrath Classic until then, basically. Hopefully. Maybe. I think this is them just... Yeah, they're throwing out a freebie to try and do whatever they can do. But yeah, yeah that new player experience just makes... Uh, especially with the boost, makes absolutely no sense. Uh, I, they, they, didn't, they didn't really get rid of problems or uber simplify them in that they could have had, I don't know, a bizarre fresh level 60 vendor. You go to the vendor and you just get a basic set of everything. They just created a bunch of skips and boosts, but those right. are skips to things that you already have to know about, boosts to things that you already have to know about, and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's the unknown unknowns that get new players. Yeah, yeah, entirely. So I think if Blizzard wants to, uh, if they want to see more success, those unknown unknowns have got to go away. The game has got to be more approachable. It's got to be more intuitive. Shadowlands is not really that intuitive because there's layers and layers and layers of stuff. Thankfully, so far, Dragonflight seems significantly more uh, intuitive, which is nice because I, I do want to bring in, mm. uh, you know, when, look, when there's a potential bright side to something, I do want to bring that in as well. So the, the bullshit here, there's none of that. Like, the, the silly hoops I had to jump through uh, on my... You know, it was even just small things, like, you know, I've got to... Got to go to Zareth Mortis, go to Orbos, go there, 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 go into your alt, send the... Buy this thing with Flux, redeem it, hmm. turn it into Ash and Cinders, send it to your alt, just all this, you know, stuff. Um, which, I mean, realistically, uh, is about five minutes of being slightly miffed, which I, uh, you know, can live with. But there just seems to be none of this confusing 
unintuitive bullshit in Dragonflight. I mean, assuming they onboard people onto the Dragonflight. I mean, I say Dragonflight systems. It's not really. I mean, it's maybe okay in Dragonflight. You should probably know how crafting plays a role in gearing, but other than that, it's very light touch. Yeah, as long as, like, as long as people are kind of, I guess, shown nicely that, hey, and this is the awkward part, right, where <laughs> it's very hard to get, and this is a whole big thing in, like, making video games, you know, showing them off and testing them to people. It's like, for players to do what you think is obvious as a game designer or anyone working on a game, that's, like, that is a dice roll. People will do the the immediate exact wrong thing, and not because they're stupid, but because they just don't have the same assumptions that you do when you're making it. You have all these assumptions about player behavior, and and not just player behavior, but player understanding, and that's like a really big part where you go, well, obviously, you know, a big, you know, obviously, anyone who plays World of Warcraft's gonna know. Okay, well, I will do, you know, most of what I do time wise is I'll do the Mythic Plus, I'll do my rating, I'll do whatever PvP, I'll do my main pillar of content. And then when I don't feel like doing that, I'll go do something else. But so many players, because of how the like the goal is oriented in World of Warcraft, is like the other stuff might as well not exist. And that's been such yeah. a standard feeling and such a standard idea for so long that there's an entire like category of players that basically need to be sat down and told, Hello. We understand you very much like Mythic Plus. And even when you don't feel like it, you log in and try to do stuff and get a little bit frustrated. Well, luckily for you, we put all of these playgrounds in the game for you to have fun when you don't feel like pushing a key. And then those kind of players will be sitting there going, Is, Have you done this before? And they kind of go, Eh, we tried. And you're like, oh, Okay. And ideally that would work. And they go, Okay, sure, I'll absolutely have that. And the opposite's true as well. Where people are like, Well, where's my grind? I've, I've got my reps up. What do I do now? Like, now you can play the game. It's that whole thing of like player assumption is like they need to find a way to in game communicate all of those avenues better to people. And hopefully yeah. that's what Renown does for those reps because it's now part of the. And I actually, I don't think I like it all that much uh, because it feels too. Um, it feels too modern video game. But the little uh, covenant button they added in Shadowlands is basically perfect for a modern game to go, hey, here's all the shit. Yep. Here's all the exactly. stuff you do. Here's your command center of all the things you do. And obviously that's got the like the new rep renowned tracks in Dragonflight. And it's like it's got their talent points there as well and your Dragonflight uh, talent point stuff. So it's like all you need to do there is throw in like maybe throw in just one line of your like cleared uh, you know like the Raider IO or the World of Warcraft website display for your like uh, raid kills. Just throw in like your best raid kill, throw in your best Mythic Plus score. And have those be buttons to the correct tab and then your item level and then just have that be the full command center so people just click that and go oh that's the stuff i have to do do i go for the pve stuff that takes longer or do i get some rep that'll take me a little bit of time and do a couple of quests i can't believe i just went from i hit the command center to this would improve the game tremendously but that's coming from the that's coming from the exact yeah but that's coming from go. the yeah it's coming from the side of or like the viewpoint of players kind of need railroad a little bit and if the game kind of railroads them into just gameplay loops, as opposed to go do the stuff, go do the other cool stuff, so you need to figure that out for Dragonflight. Otherwise, people will go in and be like, why does this feel the same but slightly different? Yeah. It feels nicer because there's no systems, but I'm still like, well, without the systems, a lot of people will go, well, what's the point? What do I do now? Where's the where's the dopamine hit of upgrade? It's like, it's in your loot. And they're like, but what about the other ones? What about the harder hitting ones? Ugh. But that's a different kettle of fish, I think. Like some of what you talked about is, uh, I suppose it's reason for putting the renowned bars in. Yeah. Or like the round does, does not work in any way that is reminiscent uh, to Shadowlands. The only thing that it really does that's similar to Shadowlands is displays upcoming rewards because yeah. it's actually just, you know, each level of renown is just a bar of a thousand rep. But Blizzard reasoning was very much in line with a lot of what you talked about. Mm -hmm. The players. Sometimes uh, it's good if they know why they're doing something, because I suppose in the past they probably have found out. And it's almost certainly not the, you know, you, me, everyone watching. It's almost certainly not us who don't know why we're doing anything in the game. Yeah. But there's probably the players who don't know to check Wowhead. 
right? This exactly. like, I don't know if you'd even say they're a majority, but there's a lot of them. And I would, I would argue they probably are the majority. Yeah. yeah. So if they were the majority, like they, they don't know what's coming in a new patch. Mm-hmm. When there's a new patch, the only thing that they see is the little splash screen and that appears yeah. when you log in. And the campaign quest thing and the yeah. campaign, yeah. And there could be a whole bunch of new rewards, a whole bunch of things to do or whatever, and they have absolutely no idea. So I think that's why that little command center and Blizzard doing the major factions with this renown bar, it's all just to make it so that a player can actually be in the game and know what to do. Yeah. Funny that that's a problem in games, but it's not just a problem in World of Warcraft. I remember oh, no, the amount no, no, no. of times uh, it was our return to Destiny 2 during Season of the Drifter, which uh, probably is a long time ago now. Uh, but we were so overwhelmed. Remember, right? It's yeah. like, oh my God. And, and, you know, quickly enough, okay, within a few days, we kind of realized these are the X number of things we should really do within a week. But it was so unintuitive. And uh, you know what? I remember heading into Warframe a few years ago, and I was just completely, Same. completely confused and bamboozled. And I think that's what it's like being a new player in so, so many games. And then Especially you, big ones. Yeah. Uh, the, the game that's classically had this problem the worst is EVE Online. Um, mm. the, the big thing there is they had this This Is EVE uh, marketing campaign in 2014, which led to this absolutely ginormous wave of new signups. And like seven of them stuck around because the new player experience was confusing and punishing and uh, yeah, didn't work. Yeah, I mean, I have a whole, I'm not sure when it'll ever happen, but like I'm kind of in the middle of writing a video on all of this stuff in terms of like how uh, using the FF14 starter guides as an example, because they were like cute, but they kind of made me think, imagine trying to play an MMO with this kind of starter guide as your only thing you are going by. It would be insane. It's like there's a whole like that game... A game category specifically of hey we're traditionally super open-ended and super like wide in terms of what you're supposed to do is kind of you're supposed to just go in and chill and do whatever you feel like that's so uh i guess so foreign to modern games that a lot of players would be trained to go in and be like well where's the where's the thing i do it's like you do whatever you want look at all this content you can do people are like Where's the bar, Philip? Where's the number I make go big? I'm confused. Please help. Because even, you know, games with, like, I guess open world games and, like, the Assassin's Creed and stuff are, like, they're, like, pretty open-ended in terms of stuff, but it is just ping-pong from one thing to the other. And that's the kind of thing. Like, that's that's what games a little bit are kind of now these days. Kind of need to... Basically, there's an entirely new wave of people coming in who aren't... Who don't play games the way... Some of us boomers, well, gaming boomers as we probably are, would do, which is, I'm gonna see what's fun to do. People are like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do the thing the game has like a clear design goal, and that's another thing where I think a lot of people are like, because you think, well, that sounds stupid. What do you mean? You go in and don't play for the fun? But how does that make any sense? But I think people are like super, um, especially because in video games, like gamers are not people to kind of go. Is that a video game? I'll give it a try. And then, like, disengage. Just play it and go, well, that was fine. I'm not going to engage with that nigga past anymore. They're the kind of people who will be like, I love this so much. I love this entire community. That's why gamers as a whole identity appeared so yeah. so sharply. Because, you know, I mean, obviously, there, there's some all forms of identity over movies and music and stuff. But gamers are, like, super in tune to what the games are and what developers want. Like... I mean, I'm sure it happens in music, but I imagine no one listens to it. If, say, a band's like, here's a thing. There's not going to be 47 YouTube videos being like, well, I actually think that that in the middle of this song, they should have did this instead. Whereas you go to video games and it's people like us sitting and going, well, we're literally thinking about what designers do. And, you know, you kind of go, well, that's just, you know, that'll just be like content creator stuff. But clearly people are interested or they wouldn't watch. They wouldn't pay attention. There wouldn't be forum posts consistently being like, but these developers are fucking stupid. They should do this instead. It's like people are super, super engaged in that way. And that's why people now are like super like close to design goals and design are like super sensitive to it, I should say. Where they log in and go, they kind of sniff out the point. Yeah, what's the point of this game? Yes. The design is pointing me here because they're smart on design. But then it's just, you know, that's that's a relatively new thing for developers to contend with. And when you're an old game and you don't have a lot of the frameworks of guiding people built up, then a lot of new players do log in and go, ah, it's big, it's open. 
Where's the where's the track I can walk on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're used to a more signposted experience. But then we remember, hey, Elden Ring exists. Yeah, so, you know, all this shit can actually work really well. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've obviously like that's that's a rough generalization and a trend, not a lot of rule or a law, because those basically don't exist in design goals, believe it or not. Yeah, I think it's just doing the shit deftly and. Uh, so far, I think Dragonflight is doing a reasonable job. I do need to get a little bit more endgame experience, but I'm trying to get that for uh, for a video soon enough anyway. 